Lewis here, Rope It Up TV, live from East Philadelphia. We are talking tonight about East Philadelphia, and we have a very special guest, Mr. Matt Cappy. Matt, hey, how are you? Good, Welcome. how are you? Welcome. I am What's awesome. up, everybody? All right. Welcome to East Philly. We were talking. We were just talking <laughs> off camera about East East Philly. East East Philly. Where are you on from? The, on the East Side. Uh, well, interesting enough, I, well, I'm, I'm from Berlin, New Jersey. Shout out to uh, Berlin Brewing Company. Uh, two great friends of mine uh, started this this company. But I'm from Berlin, New Jersey, um, and uh, yeah, was fortunate to be in a really nice music program out there. Uh, as uh, we're talking to the man behind the camera, who's also. Uh, for, from my hometown, is from the same musical upbringing. So, and That's here, Nick Perry, ladies and gentlemen. Perry. And here I sit with you. All right. Marks, all right. All right. At the at the one beautiful Robodope store, and uh, really excited about my record coming out, uh, top of the, uh, 2017. And, all right. Uh, all right. So I just I'm just going to continue on that Berlin coming up in Jersey yeah um, it, usually I start out with where we met we're gonna cover that absolutely but you've played with some amazing people uh, have, yeah. around the world and tell me about the path from Berlin New Jersey because it's really interesting to me where uh, everybody comes from different places what, what is what is your story like how did you start who brought you up mm. you know um, First and foremost, you know, the movie Mr. Holland's Opus, I, I had that man as a fourth grader, and uh, his name was, uh, yeah, Bill Garton. Uh, so Bill Garton was, and is a legendary music um, band director, and uh, for my time, I had, my sister was a clarinet player, three years older than me, my sister Barbara, and I would be, you know, hop, skip, and jumping to get to the concert, Christmas concert, spring concert. The whole town is this little blue-collar town, you know, you know, Mr. Garten had about 80% of the, the the whole school's population wanting to be in band. I mean, he's... Where's he, he from? Uh, he's a South Philadelphia guy. And uh, a big-time South Philadelphia guy. And But he's, you know, he, he, you know, is filled with all these sayings. But, like, he just, you know, the bar was here with him. He wasn't, you know, his thing was like, well, you know, I just saw him. He's like, you know, if, if the band is bad, man, he's like, that's my fault. That's not their fault. Like... I'm their teacher, like, and and I needed to show them a that I love them, you know, more than they love themselves, even at that age, and then b that you can, and we will <laughs> get to this get bar to up here, yeah. and and there's no excuse not to, like when when a teacher cares that much, and then that feeling starts emanating throughout the whole school, even, and it, and it really was a special time because the superintendent uh, Charles Caramana, he was a big supporter of music and also loved Maynard Ferguson, would go to Maynard Ferguson shows and knew what he had in, in Bill Garten, so he supported it. I mean, and so it does, it is a one-two punch in the education system. A, if you have a great music teacher, B, if you actually, on the top, they actually know what they have. Because, um, you know, unfortunately, sadly, that same district has turned into not what it was. and. It's sad and shocking, and I can't believe it, it had a 30, 40 year run where it was just like these fourth, fifth, and sixth graders were like playing so many songs at such a high level. And, right, and, right. and we, you know, he would take us out and we'd play concerts, and people would just be shocked. Like, how do you get these kids to do that? Other band directors would come in, like, Bill, what are you doing? How are you doing? And he's just like, you know, like, well, you know, care. How about that? That's what I did. Start with yeah, caring. Uh, Start with like, wow. you know, music is a language. Start with that. So, and it's even more interesting, Lou, because my parents aren't from Berlin. Like, my dad's from uh, New York. Like, uh, My parents musicians? My mother uh, is from West Virginia, and her mother played uh, keys, organ. Um, but I never met her. In she, church? Yeah. She, uh, well, she, she, she was married. You know, my, my grandfather, my mother's father, is a Methodist minister in West Virginia. Oh. Um, so Reverend Clyde Hensley. Wow. He's he's up in heaven right now, smiling at this at this, and uh, all my you know all my grandparents are up there. But um, so yeah, my mother picked Same. up all my mother picked my mother Hopefully. picked up music, and uh, and uh, you know my and they met in New York City, New York and West Virginia came together, and then they oh right so one so one parent is from New York and the other is from West, West Virginia, Virginia. Gotcha. and then Stouffer's used to be an actual physical restaurant, not just uh, the orange box and the frozen. Food. Oh really? Yeah, it used to be. So Times Square, my parents met, 
and um, my dad was the uh, bar manager, my mother was the food dietitian, and uh, then they transferred, they wanted a little bit slower life, so they transferred, Philadelphia had a Stouffer's, and my parents worked there. An actual restaurant? Yeah. And they happened upon Berlin, New Jersey, they just, they just randomly picked that town, and the house we grew up on, and... On Rose Lane. <laughs> on Rose Lane. On Rose White Lane. White picket fence. Uh, well, the whole bit? not White picket fence, but it's uh, North Rose Lane for the for the people in Berlin watching this. Oh, uh, gotcha. I'm sorry. So I, thought, uh, I thought you were making it like a sort of like a perfect. No, so, so so yeah. the one song on my record is yeah. called Rose Lane. Oh. So. Yeah. All right, now I got is, it. Which is where I'm, I'm going slow. ultimately. Well, I'm a little you know, slow. You know. Yeah. This is live on camera, folks. It's That's really, what Robot Up TV is. It's really interesting to me. I I th you know I. Th I think that a lot of people don't understand. I certainly don't. So coming from the coming from the fan side of this, like what makes a musician? Mm. You know, I think a lot of people have the impression from the last 50 years of advertising that people are just born with this stuff and it'll just rise to the top and everything will be fine. The real talented ones get make it and the and the ones who didn't make it aren't necessarily very talented, but you speak of something where there's not really, it's not, the, the enabler's not the right word, but uh, a mentor, a person along the way, not just a person, but a community along the way. It doesn't take that one guy, that one teacher, it doesn't take just mm. the guy who funded it, it takes a community of people. And you mentioned the church in reference to your mom, so you know we 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 are gonna have other people on the show, and it's a very consistent theme that where there's a community mm. that supports art, mm -hmm. that supports musicians, yeah. then the talent rises and there is success. Uh, Brian Eno just posted something about this. Wow. Uh, there's a, there's a word that he made up, uh, seniors. Mm. It's like there's no one's a genius. Mm -hmm. There's only a bunch of seniuses, <laughs> which means that a person rises to the top of a scene. Mm. The, what he means by scene is community. Mm. And are you kind of saying that with both the church for your mom and both? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like you kind of kind of feels that like you had some mentorship and you had support. Well, you in know, Berlin, I, New Jersey. It, yeah, you know, it's a, not a, a it's random not York, blue collar, yeah. you know. Middle of the road, New Jersey, Camden County town, and uh, you know, it, it starts with good teaching. But that same man, um, Bill Garten, gave my parents once he saw, you know, I had some talent and some passion for it. Um, he, the first number he gave my parents was um, for J uh, Joe Fallon, who's my first private trumpet teacher. Hmm. And uh, Joe Fallon, you know, love him dearly, and uh, we we just lost him in the past year, hmm, and. Uh, you know, he, he was like, uh, you know, a, the term second father, it's like I've, I've basically had three. I've had Bill Garton, I've had Joe Fallon, and then I've had Rick Kerber. And Joe Fallon was my first trumpet teacher from like fifth grade through eighth grade. And then Rick Kerber was my, my next trumpet teacher from like freshman year of high school through um, sophomore year of college. And, you know, these men guided me. Um, they laughed with me. You know, they cried with me, they, they, they pushed me, they got mm. mad at me, mm. you know, they, they said they, they knew what I could do even when I didn't know what I could do yet. Um, and then the other beyond th where you were. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, that those junior high years are tough too, like, <laughs> you know, I thank my parents, my mom and my dad, they, they wouldn't let me stop. And those are the years where, you know, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade are, are awesome, and, and I was very fortunate to be in a wonderful top-of-the-line program, but... Then it's like you're going every week to your lesson, and you know most weeks you're not practicing. You're just like showing up, and they're like, "No, nah, no, you're doing this. I don't want to hear it. Like this is what pushing you're doing." Pushing you a little bit. Yeah. Well, pushing or a you, lot. pushing yeah. you because they see you don't see at, at at 13, 14, 15 what's possible, but that's the hump. You get through that, and all of a sudden you're like a sophomore, and then other kids who stopped or didn't or not, they're looking at it like, "Whoa, he's so much better than me. How do I do that?" Well, it's not. It's not, in a way, it's not because I practice so much, but it's I just stuck with it. You got to, you know, when they say 90% of success is showing up. And, you know, in, in my case, that's it, definitely, I, I think. Oh, I agree. Fair, I, show up. I show up a lot. You know, you show up. You show up. You, you know, you play. But, hmm. you know, I, I do, you know, I, I do have a an ability that was given to me, you know, I absolutely. But, uh, right, but, there's always a portion of it that is, 
your your ability and your talent. Yeah, but but but, but, it's but you got you got to toe the line. Not everything, right? It's, yeah, and most you times you need that other support. Yeah, yeah, Is absolutely. that correct? You need that support, but you do need to toe the line and really work your tail off at yeah. different times. You know, Did you ever be, wonder how many geniuses just were like just mm-hmm. just never. Like who had the music in them? And you, you, I mean, that list has to be or chopping wood so somewhere. Long. Or I mean, we're talking so long that list. Here's the thing, you know, we talk about music. Sorry to interrupt, but it's like we talk about music, and, and as it's like a con- consumable commodity, and like how many musicians can we have? I mean, what mm. if all those people were successful and played on a regular basis? Like the geniuses that have been overlooked who went off to the mill. Is that great uh, waiting for? Uh, did you ever see that movie? Uh, uh, R- R- Rodriguez is his last name. He's a guy from Detroit who tried a music career and he was not, and then he went off and he did all kinds of wonderful things, mm. you know, painting houses or whatever. Mm. But he was actually famous in South Africa. Right, right. I forget the name of the town. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but it's right. like I, I, I mean, I think that the key is mm. people supporting. Music just for the sake of music, yeah, as an enriching force in, in everybody's life. Yeah, and, and and quite frankly, I wish more of the <laughs> lay person did it, does it, supports it, because you know, like I, I was teaching lessons earlier, and those parents support music. You know, they get they get what what it's doing to their child, and the joy for their child, for yeah. their child, yeah, and the joy, and it, you know, it's a two, you know, it's a two way street though too, like this gift. I played, you know, I played my, my father's, father, my grandfather on the Cappy side, I, I, I played his funeral. You know, I played wow. my, my wow. dad's mother's funeral. Um, I played, you well, know. Why? Just just as tradition? Like, is that is that no, a standard thing? No, or? because I was kind of asked to, but I was, you know, but I was asked to. Because your family's proud of you and they know they're how proud, you are. They're proud, yeah. But, but right? that, you know, yeah, and, and you know, this was uh, on my dad, yeah, so we're. You know, I, I I was hesitant to because you know emotionally and all that, but it's also like they yeah the, again at that age in your life they know more than you do absolutely so that's right. where the care and that that community and just like softly saying you know son this is something that you know this should, is important to us you should you should think it's definitely important you should think hard about it like you know this is this is quality and you yes. know I'm glad I've, you did oh man right. I, silly I thank question. God every day thank yeah you. it's like. Yeah, I mean that was well. Yeah, but you don't know. I mean, I could have said no, or you know. But it's it's you know. Uh, yeah. So. I'm gonna throw a little joking aside in there about my. You mentioned several fathers. <laughs> yeah. I have so, two. Yes. My father. Uh huh. Who raised me in business. Yeah. We had a community and a scene around business because that's what he knew. Uh, and then Jerry Garcia. Mm. He taught me the other side. Well, that's, I mean, the one, you know. What, what, I never met him. Never? <laughs> one time. Yeah, one really? time. Really? So I used to work on Grateful Dead Tour and I handled all the uh, uh, laminates. Wow. All for the all Grateful the Dead Tour? Yeah, what, yeah. What, so what? my job awesome. was to go there and do the Greenpeace table for the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Like, back when you when they first started having tables like social awareness or environmental awareness at shows, right? Wow. At, but they couldn't trust, and they had the wharf rats, they had a, a five or six different tables at that point. But they couldn't trust everybody with the laminates. Because the guys would like, the people who worked at the tables would run the laminate outside and then bring people in. So they would give all the laminates to me. So I would be walking around with like 13 or 14 Grateful Dead laminate backstage passes around my neck. <laughs> and you know, I had to be really careful because people would literally just run up and grab them off your neck if you weren't careless. Wow. Can't run on my shirt. Wow. Um, but I had just gotten that assignment. Like, you're going to hold the laminates. And you walk people in, or you give them their laminate, you walk them in, and then you take the laminate away so they can't go out and let other people in. I think it was in uh, Buffalo, New York, maybe? Albany, maybe. Uh, and I'm walking back, and I'm just like, like 14 laminates, it's summertime, just sticking to my skin. And I'm walking through, and it's kind of dark, and Jerry comes through with his bodyguard, 
Uh, and he's got his son, he's got those sunglasses on, it, but it's dark. Mm -hmm. Walk into the backstage area. Mm -hmm. They're walking by, and I'm like, oh, it's Jerry and Ken, and I'm just like, I'm just getting to do my job. And he does one of these, like, mm -hmm. with the glasses, and looks at me. <laughs> Gives me like a little half smile, and then heads off the stage. And I was like, that's good. I'm good. Anyway, my second father. So, mm -hmm. but he did, you know, but the inspiration was there for me to head in a certain direction. So, fathers and mentors are important. Joking way of saying that. <clears throat> no, yeah, uh, yeah, they're they're incredibly important, and uh, you know, I, I'm thankful for for, for for the ones who you know have seriously helped me to this path where I'm at today, and, and living as a musician, and you know, starting with Jill Scott in 2000, and, I, and, and all the steps to get up to that point. It, you know, it's it's it was, you know, words really can't express how important it really was. You know. Let's let's run down. I want to talk about how we met, but first I want to say, mm. you have played with mm. Jill Scott. Jill Scott. Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Um, Maxwell. Uh, Mary J. Blige. Um, Dave Matthews. Elvis Costello. Uh, Jay Z. Uh, the Roots. The Mavericks. Just to name a few. K9. <laughs> uh, dear friend K9. Yeah, just to name a few. It's 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 been great. You know, I started with, you know, there was a scene out of Philly, uh, late '90s, and um, a club called Wilhelmina's, and and I started sitting in, and I met, you know, most of the guys that were in the, you know, the, uh, were already on the record and stuff, and um, trombonist Jeff Bradshaw. Um, told the music director, you know, you should call this guy, just give him a shot, so, um, I was actually teaching at Paul Six, and uh, the local high school. Paul Six High School, Catholic school, right near here. Right near here, and uh, so I'm teaching, you know, I'm, I'm the brass guy one day a week, and I'm, I'm, I'm well, here's, you know, a, a neat South Jersey story slash Philly story, so, the, um, so I get the call, I, I've been showing up, it was uh, Thursdays, and, um, so I show up for Friday to teach, and um, I get to call on a lesson, having a lesson, and uh, so I step out, and, and Jeff is like adamant. He's like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm a teacher right now. I'm at, I'm at this Paul Six High School. He's like, you know, can you, uh, can, can you, I need you to get to rehearsal. Can you get here, like, right now? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll be done at, like, you know, 2.30. He's like, nah, you know, it was like, it was like 11. He's like, I, I, can you leave right now? I need you right now. I was like, you know what? Uh, yeah, I can't hold You got the call. Yeah, I got the call. <laughs> and then I realized it. So what I did, so I go out to my boss, uh, Agnes Marchion, who, um, an amazing vocal teacher, an amazing pianist, amazing musician. Um, Agnes Marchion's um, husband, who passed away a little bit before, um, was a famous trumpeter in Philadelphia named huh. Tony Marchion. So, so Tony Marchion... Um, North Catholic band director in Kensington, um, Philadelphia legend trumpeter, was the um, contractor at the Valley Forge Music Fair. Yeah, I remember that place. All those years I was in, he was the he was the head guy. Big time show. It was a spinning stage. Spinning stage. His yeah. son Nick Marchione, um is 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 the lead trumpet player on um, Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, the Village Vanguard big band. Now today, wow. okay. grew up in Haddonfield. Um, right. East Philly. So Tony Marchione was like an icon and had this whole lineage of trumpet students, of which was my very first teacher, Joe Fallon. So it's crazy how everything is so connected in the music world. It's so, so I go to Agnes Marchione. I said, Agnes, you know, I, you know, she was great. I mean, she was, she was a, her husband was a musician, so she could talk musician. She wasn't right. just a, a choral director. So she says, Matt, what's going on? I said, you, you remember I've been talking about Wilhelmina's? I said, well, you know, I just got this call to go, you know, try out for like this Jill Scott rehearsal. She's like, cool, go. You'll make up your lessons whenever you can. So that literally changed my life. <laughs> Cause uh, I show up and uh, I sit in the first rehearsal and then I get asked back. And next thing you know, that was uh, the, you know, the winter of uh, 99 or, you know, yeah, no, or spring or whatever. It was like 99 and a 2000. The record was just about to come out, and a year and a half later, we're opening up for Sting 
on the brand new day tour, play the Wells Fargo Center. That's right, um, back it. We right. had, uh, you know, re- uh, recorded uh, 826 plus live down in Washington, D.C., which is now a gold live record. Mm-hmm. Just got live. So, I mean, it's crazy, you know, year and a half my changed, my, my life changed. And, uh, well, you're right in that right in that spot. I mean, her life changed at that time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, everybody. Was yeah. Involved. I mean, I, fantastic. you know, it's funny. I, I just got back from when I last saw you, I was I just playing with your keys, but I'm full circle again back on tour with Jill. Mm-hmm. And uh, this summer, it was amazing. I played North Sea Jazz Fest. Mm-hmm. Um, saw Corey Henry and the Funk Apostles there. Amazing. Um, Love Corey. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, J- J- Japan, all this stuff. So, I, well, we just got back from Nassau, Bahamas. We played. Yeah, what was that? I saw uh, you like post. You're like, <laughs> part of the. I'm uh, in the Bahamas. I'm like, wait, I just saw him yesterday. Went, right. Why is he? He's, he's, uh, it was he part of like the, he was taking a vacation. The cab ride right, wasn't it? Was, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a yeah playcation. Uh, so it was uh, the Capital Jazz Cruise Fest, but uh, ah, gotcha. Capital Cruise Jazz Fest. Did and, you just mention another record though while you were on our show? In this interview? No. Is that is that what that is? Is it Capitol Records? I have no idea. It's just called. I've never oh, played sorry. it. It's like I've never been on the cruise, but it's like a cruise. And then this concert, they docked and they all got off and they watched Jill, and nice. then they got back on the cruise and kept going. But it's yeah. I don't. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Right? No, I don't know why it's called that. Honestly, but maybe we're gonna have to find out. I I I've heard of it. I've not seen it. Yeah. Is it Capitol? Records or is it? No, I don't. I think it's just me. Is, is there a cruise oh, line? It's like the DC thing, right? DC cat. It is. The capital. It, yeah, yeah, you're right. You you're know, right. you got to pay attention to vowels. I got that, <laughs> I got that one wrong. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a. We got some time left. We got some I wanna time. Want to hear left. what's happening? So, you're out on the road a little bit, and yeah. then you're back here. You got to. You want to finish this record, right? You got a record. I got a record coming out on coming the road. Coming out on the road. Mm-hmm. Um. It features uh, some incredible people. I have a single out right now, Amazing Grace and Marsha Ambrosius. Mm-hmm. Um, the record's called Church and State, so um, the, the, I guess the theme of it is basically Matt Cappy's trumpet sound, and I've curated uh, everything from hip hop to soul to you know, you know, jazz um, groove, and also like you know, an ode to sort of like. Yeah, I don't know, Lansky, I don't know. It's just, my, but you, you have some very, like, devout, kind of, like, almost classical pieces in there, which are on the church side. Is that right? Uh, yeah, well, Amazing Graces and Ave Maria is. So, okay. Ave Maria, but it's, uh, yeah, and then, then, on then the I did On the state side, is it the, more secular? Is that the concept? Yeah, uh, state is in, not secular, but just, like, more, you know, what we're about. You know, like, you know, waking up every day, Putting your putting your clothes on and going to work and, and, and putting in a good day's work, you know, state. Got it. It's like Got it. that. Got it. Um, the church side, I just feel blessed because of my upbringing that way, where, where my, my grandfather was a minister, so and he was a Southern Methodist minister, so it's, you know, he's you know he's a very soulful person, you know, he, mm-hmm. he's coming from an interesting background himself. So um, I've always, you know, been connected to the church that way, and. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've, I've always, you know, one of my things is, I guess, playing melodies, so I, I wanted to be able to play those songs and string orchestra behind me, and, uh, you know, I, I actually did a, an ode to uh, Puccini, so we did uh, Ness and Dorma, and uh, my dear friend Stephen Costello singing, who's a premier tenor in the world today, um, uh, you know, Chill Moody's on the record, an upcoming Philly rapper, um, and, and my great friends, you know, great great musicians, Anthony Tin on bass, Clay Sears on guitar, uh, Eric Wortham on keys, uh, Mario Crew on drums, Junius Burvine on keys. Um, Incredible people. For just an aside to the folks out there, look up all the people that you just mentioned because some serious cats. Yeah, and you know, we had yeah. talked about um, you know, like, yeah, all those guys have, have toured with major artists. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. that's the thing about Philly musicians, you know, like, you know, they, they, they take the music so seriously that it gets noticed. And, and uh, you know, if you name an artist, I guarantee there's probably a, a you know, top notch artist, Justin Timber. We were I saying mean, last man, week, it was like Philly or Dallas. Philly or Dallas. You know, we that's were talking it. about before. Yeah, it's like, absolutely. tap into certain communities. And there's a pretty, there's a really hardcore, committed, talented, 
bass musicians here in Philadelphia uh, oh, nice. and, and in Dallas, and we have some here, and you know that yeah. speaks to some of the records that have come out on Rope Dope. Uh, have a core of those people: Spud C. Wright and R.C. Williams. You know uh, that are. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Again, music. taking I, it I, back to the beginning. Oh, I didn't say. Like, there's a scene. Sorry. Sean and I toured with Kurt Sean Franklin Martin. together. So I apologize. I forgot. There about you go. That. So we did the hero right. book. Sean Kurt Franklin, Franklin was Franklin, so. tapped into that. Snarky Puppy was tapped into that. And then, and then here in Philly, I mean, I don't think you can watch anybody on major television who's not a Philly musician right. on the stage coming yeah. through that Absolutely. network, Absolutely. that community of people yeah. um, who put a lot of work in. You know, yeah. and 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 are, and and are doing it. So, yeah. um, where are you going next? You out on the road? Again? Um, I got a show in Vegas uh, with Jill early you November. Doing the, like, you missed the debates. You know, you're you know, playing the debates. <laughs> Sorry, you played no. Vegas with Jill. <laughs> Thank goodness. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Remember that show that we didn't bring politics into it? Right, okay. right. That's this show. Mm. Um, mm. Sorry. Mm. Um, back it up. And after Vegas. Back home for um, family. Back home, yeah, family, and uh, and and just you know, putting the record you know together, finishing the artwork, and uh, my dear friend Maggie Hayes uh, did the did the cover. So nice. A wonderful artist out of Savannah, Georgia, House of Hayes. Um, you know, it's uh, yeah. I, I, I'm just thrilled. You know, just you know. Looking for all the avenues to uh, promote the record and, and get it out there. I, I, I'm I'm so excited. Um, I'm excited too. I know that people in in the UK that that we've talked to and people in Japan are excited about the record. And I think yeah, you know, we just we're gonna get there and uh, get it out. And you, you know the cool story is how we met though. We, we forgot we how we met. Do that. Or is the camera gonna cut? We got we got two minutes. Two minutes. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. So yeah. I'm, after touring with The Roots and then going on tour with, with K-9, in 08, the economy fell, right? So um, Matt Cappy started his DJing career. Um, lessons with Quest a little bit, and just after the, every show with The Roots, he would invite, you know, I'd go with him, we'd whisk away, and then I would be, you know, in, in the, uh, the, the, the crow nest here, just like watching. and. Uh, watching him like amazing you know go nuts and having the room go nuts so i get back and i have relationships in these this area with restaurants and stuff so one of them cork now keg and kitchen um the manager the name of felix shout out to felix felix, felix was like <laughs> i said felix you know i dj and he's like you dj i was like yeah dj so that started my dj career so um i had serato i had one techniques i went out and got another techniques and brought it Creator Records, and I started. So I saw the Thursday night, Thursday night weekly that lasted five years called Soul Control, and uh, that's where I meet this awesome man, Lewis. And all I knew his name was Lewis, and he knew me, Matt, the DJ, and I knew him, Lewis, the cool guy who was at the bar who knew great music, and we would get into talks about music. And it wasn't until like two or three years later that a third party was there and basically was realizing that he didn't know I was a trumpet player and I didn't know that he was rope dope and then that person <laughs> kind of laid the groundwork and we were like what i was like wait a <laughs> second you were just you're just like this guy who knows cool music i didn't know like you have a label which by the way shout out to rope dope charlie hunter christian mcbride photo of experiment anti ballast i mean you know the, the history when i was in college was rope dope was definitely one of the records that i would look for and and, the, and i made it on 30 dozen brass band i mean name it so you know, congrats, man, and, and it's an honor to, to, to be here and be on the label and and, and trying to set set my, my own artist path off of it and through it and with it. So. It's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a good thing. People yeah. need to pay attention. Yeah. Thank you, Matt Cappy. Thank you, Lewis. It's a pleasure. Yeah, brother.